Okay, I'll start off today's conversation with a commitment uh, letter said to be written by President Muhammadu Buhari, and it reads, I join my excellency brother, Uhuru Kenyatta, President of the Republic of Kenya, to a firm commitment to improving learning outcomes in our respective countries by ensuring equitable access to quality education, end of quote. Now, he wrote this uh, particular letter uh, from the Global Partnership for Education Summit, sometimes last month, and um, that was in London. And uh, the summit is over, definitely. And that is to say, as a nation, we know we'll see the need for quality investment in education today. That is the global concern all round. And for us to aid this investment in the education, what more do we need to do differently? As we all agree that we must touch education with the best of intent. My guests will provide some answers. You're watching on the spot. My name is Blessing Abu. We'll be back with my guests in a moment. <laughs> My guest is a strategist, an entrepreneur, public speaker, a leadership coach, and is a public servant with over 25 years worth of experience. He holds a Bachelor of Science a degree in accounting from Obafemi Awolowo University, Lefe. Uh, however, his drive for entrepreneurship pushed him to participate in the GMP Entrepreneur Program at the Lagos Business School at the Pan-African University in 2007. My guest is also an alumnus of the Business School, Netherlands, where he obtained a master's degree in business administration in 2012. His entrepreneurial spirit was nurtured at System Specs Limited, and he's done so much there, he rose through the ranks. And um, on the uh, Nigerian as well as the African markets, yeah, where he's done so many things, uh, even at the senior managerial level and the international scene as well. Well, he will, however, move on to fulfill his desire of being an inventor and employer of labor by co-founding uh, the Media Vision Limited in 2003, a company involved in developing products in publishing, television rights, acquisition, as well as event management, and also other areas in project consultancy. I could go on and on about this man with many parts, but then his present assignment is seen to so many issues in education. But before then, his uh, prowess in all of this area caught the attention of former governor of Lagos State, uh, Akimu Meambodi, who appointed him as special advisor on education. And here he served between 2015 to 2019. And for his current assignment, like I said, President Muhammad Barari found it worthy to count him uh, to be in his cabinet as well, appointing him to serve in various capacity and now he is the senior special assistant to the president on education interventions. Let's welcome Fela Bankolimo. Welcome to, to the here. program. Nice to get you to be here. Good to see you again after Good all this time. Good to see you after all these years, really. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, education for us as a nation is something strategic. Yeah. We might have not gotten it right uh, in some areas, and then in the course of the journey, too, we've missed some steps. But there is this growing profile of education worldwide, and we cannot afford to lag behind. Yeah. And certainly, rising to this exigency is critical for Mr. President. I just wrote, read a quote yeah. for him from his yeah. uh, program last month. Yeah. How are we doing in this direction if we are seeing to such utmost urgency? Yes or no? Yes, I mean, um, the reality of blessings is that we have challenges. And I think we, this administration has never shied away from the fact that there are challenges we need to engage. Um, more so in our education sector, we have security challenges um, that we're, and we're, we're working on. Um, but um, for Mr. President, it's critical that we have to solve our education challenge um, as a nation. Um, if we don't, we're being left behind. Um, we need to expand access to, to, to education, to, to more education, get more people in school. We have our art school challenge that we have to crack. You know, so those are things that we are facing as a nation. But I, w but I would tell you that there's, a, there's still a commitment from the president, um, the vice president, the minister of education, you know, all the key stakeholders are all rowing the same um, way to say, hey, how do we crack and solve these problems we're facing in our education sector? So, yes, I, I can say categorically that it's something that is we are looking at 
and working very hard mm. to, to engage. Okay. You, you've <coughs> been in this particular assignment since 2019. Yeah. And um, between then and today, we've witnessed um, several activities for the sector. So with this chair news from Mr. President's letter, and his commitment yeah. or recommitment yeah. uh, now at um, the global summit. Yeah. What do you consider as most critical for us to say, okay, you're hitting the ground running? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you look at that, if we've, 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 what we've done is to say, okay, what are the key issues in education? Security is a key thing. We'll come to that. The quality of our teachers is also a key thing. Quality of teachers, you know, how do we? Technology, how do we mainstream technology into our education system? And our key thing we're looking at is TVET. How do we crack our TVET problem? Now, if you look at those four key areas, those are things that we're saying to ourselves, we need to solve and solve big time. Um, why teachers? I've always believed strongly, and, and you can see what Mr. President has done in that space. You know, um, over, this administration has done a lot to upgrade the quality and welfare of our teachers. Mm -hmm. But we still have a lot we have to do. The question has always been, when education stakeholders engage issues, and I ask you, if you could solve one problem, which problem would you solve? You know, yes, you know, it's a difficult question to ask, but say, what key problem you solve? And if you ask me, it's education, it's our teachers. Because I believe strongly that a good teacher um, will get the best out of a child, even if that child is under a tree. I'd rather a good teacher teaching a child under a tree, in quotes, than, than having the, the best um, um, facilities that you have a poor teacher in. Because that teacher is, is critical. Mm. I'm sure you remember your teachers when you were young. I remember Mr. the late Mr. Bolani when I was in mm -hmm. Government College, Lagos, mm -hmm. my social studies teacher in, in, J, in SS um, Form 1. I still remember him today. Mm -hmm. You know, that tells you how impactful he's been. So for us, one of the key things is improving the quality of our teachers. You know, how do we ensure that we improve the quality of our teachers, not just in, you see, not just in silos, in this state, Lagos is doing well, um, Edo is doing well, Okan is doing well. That doesn't solve our problem as a nation. We must, it must be holistic. Because you see, if Lagos is doing well, and Kanu is doing well, and Edo is doing well, and Ebony is doing well, and the other states are not doing well, they still pollute the same, the same um, system. system. Mm -hmm. So we have to come up with a, what we're working on is a, a national program that helps us ensure that we're able to improve mm -hmm. The quality of our teachers across board. Okay, so you talk something about TVET. Is that the program? Yeah, TVET. So TVET, um, vocation, vocation. Every nation that has moved forward, every nation that has moved forward, has cracked vocation. TVET, technical and vocational training for their children, for their, for their, for the students okay. on a whole scale level. I came across a video um, very recently. The CEO of um, of um, of um, Apple. I know, the, and they were asking him, he said, there's a misconception out there, person. And he said, hey, the misconception is that all the top companies are in China because of cheap labor. He said, it's a misconception. He said, maybe when we started then, labor was cheap. We said, now labor is no longer cheap in China. He said, the reason we are all in China is because of TVET, vocation. He said, the average Chinese has solid vocation skills. So that's why we're all setting up our companies in China. So for us as a nation, um, we have to crack our... TV challenge. We must ultimately ensure that we create a system hmm. that ensures that it's impossible for anybody to leave our primary or secondary school system without having strong TV skills, vocation skills, you know. So those are the kind of things that we're working on, framework that we're building. And already we're, we're, we're excited at, at, at the things that we're seeing okay. in that space. That is very imperative, uh, Mr. Olemo. And um, for, for most nations today, Nigeria inclusive, we're looking towards the Asians and some other uh, uh, big regions to actually source our materials. Yeah, We're yeah. more like a consuming nation yeah. for some of the products yeah, yeah, from yeah. electronic, you name yeah, it. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And today, technology, enabling technology for education is very, is very key. We've seen a situation where we complain about our graduates not being employable. Yeah, and we have jobs. Lacking, and yeah. we have jobs. Yeah, and um, I think the missing link is what I mean, your office is trying to, no, to, to to point out now. Yes, yes. I mean, let, let me put it this way: um, it's cracking TV. It also helps. Helps. I mean, we we all were alive to the NSAS um, protests and all that. You know, one of the key things is also creating jobs, and that's one of the things that TV has helped us to do. Okay, because once you have. Um, youths that, are, that have skills in their hands, they can never be hungry. You have a skill, you can do something with it, you know. That's why ensuring that we have a, a TV system that makes it impossible for any, anybody. Mm. Once you go through a school system in Nigeria, 
and even if you're outside the school system, okay. must ensure that you're able to learn civic skills. Once you learn civic skills, we're able to know for sure that you can do something. Mm. I mean, look at it. I mean, during my time in Lagos, when we we're engaging this problem, one of the key reasons was there was a construction boom in Lagos. We we're building bridges, building houses. But guess what? The, the, the people that were doing the basic jobs were coming from Ghana, were coming from, from, from Togo, from Benin Republic and all that because they had solid vocation training. And we said to ourselves, hey, this is a major challenge. And that's the same thing we've seen all around the country. Mm. So it is critical that we, 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 we give our, the average Nigerian those skills to ensure that they can get jobs and they can add value to themselves. Okay. Let, let's take a look at um, inclusivity, pupils in education. Of course, there is this wide gap and it's getting wider by the day. Most of the things we're seeing, even during COVID, um, uh, lockdown occasioned yeah. by COVID, yeah. people could actually not learn. And for those who were just yeah. fortunate to yeah. learn, yeah. we knew our parents groaned under yeah. providing yeah. devices and yeah. even the data for them to sustain such learning. Mm -hmm. So inclusivity is key for us. Yeah. If we must enable technology like you're looking yeah. at yeah. Uh, and um, bridging the gap between the rural yeah. and also the urban areas, yeah. for some, they could even afford that in the urban areas. How much more? Mm -hmm. Those are the so. How do we do that? Uh, how do we do that? I mean, I think the reality was one of the gifts. Um, um, you know, um, was I think it was Winston Churchill that said, "Never let a good crisis, you know, go away without doing something with it." Um, um, COVID. One of the good things we got from COVID was the fact that we, like you said, it mm. showed the fact that we need to create in future. We must ensure that. When our schools close, learning continues. Mm. And that's what you're seeing a lot of states do. Um, the Federal Ministry of Education during that time, you know, ensured that their education portals that were free. Mm. So whether you, had, whether you had data or not, you could go into those portals and learn. Mm. But whatever we do must, must be hybrid. We must have um, the face-to-face -face learning okay. for people that cannot access that and also the people that can go online. And that's mm. what everybody's doing now. But one key thing with, that most states did, I mean, fact, every state did and the federal government did during the COVID period, was to ensure that there was back to educational content on radio, educational content on TV. That made it possible for wherever you are, you can learn on radio. So classes were being taught on radio. Mm -hmm. And that is continuing across the country, mm -hmm. which is very, very important. But the reality is this, that more parents must get involved in the education of their children. Mm -hmm. um, you can't divorce yourself from it like we used to do in those days and say the teachers will teach their children. But no, where we are going now, the education we have now, more parents must be involved in the training of their children more people must be, you must get involved in it to help your child remain relevant in the 21st century, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what we're, 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 we're doing and we'll continue to do. Like okay. I said, a lot of states, I know Lagos State just launched an, an, a portal, an education portal for students in the state. Lots of state governors have, governments have done that and we will continue to do that. Okay. It's to ensure that more people mm -hmm. have access to educational okay. content across so we'll the country. So we'll take a look at this uh, access uh, at uh, the different subnational yeah. um, levels uh, on what your office yeah. is pushing yeah. to do um, with the federal government, of yeah. course, uh, that is with the state government, I yeah. beg your pardon, yeah. and um, see what other key areas that interventions could actually come in, especially with the recommitment of Mr. President yeah. just at the recent uh, Global Education uh, Program. Yeah. I'm sure we we'll want to feel what other things Definitely. you said at that time. Okay, you're watching On The Spot, and the uh, guest is a senior special assistant to the president on education, Fela Bankolima. We'll be right back after this break. If you just tuned in, the program is on the spot, and we're taking a look at education interventions by the government of the day. And I have a senior special assistant to the president on the education interventions, Fela Bankolimo, still on the spot. Yeah. Okay. 
Before the break, we're talking about interventions at the subnational levels. Mm -hmm. Yes, you made mention of Lagos State. Uh, I know Edo is doing something yeah, wonderful as well. Yeah. Right, there's in Kano and some other areas. Yeah. But like you pointed out in case of um, your answers, if one state is just doing well amongst the 36, yeah. then we are certainly not going anywhere. You know, there's an African addict that speaks to the fact that you, if you are the only person doing well in your family, then you're not doing well at all. Yeah, because fact, they're you are the most impoverished human Because they're going to they're gonna drag you down. I think that's one of the key things. I tell people, and my experience, my experience, my four years in Lagos State, mm -hmm. you know, and also my time here, has, I've come to one clear realization that we're going to solve our education challenges in the States. It's in the States. What the federal government will do is what the program should do and will continue to do is to provide a big vision of what we need to, need to do as a country, bring everybody together to achieve it, support them financially as well as, well, as, well as we can, and help monitor and track it, you know, because that's the way we can solve problems. Uh, some uh, part of the letter written by the president yeah. said, uh, in concluding, this uh, letter was uh, obviously about 157 word letter. He pledged to increase our annual domestic education expenditure by 50% over the next two years and yeah. up to 100% by 2025. And this is beyond, of course, the global benchmark, yeah. which everyone is actually yeah. uh, glad uh, about. Now, in meeting up this quickly, because for some, there's okay, uh, the political will to actually drive yeah. visions by predecessors is always our issue, too, here in this yeah. part of the world. Yeah. So... How do you hope to help match this? No, I think respect? ultimately, one of the key mm. things we, we have, we've all come to agree is mm. when we talk about education spend in Nigeria, one of the key things, one of the mistakes mm. people make mm. is to look at the education spend only from the federal government level. But I tell people, don't, don't make that mistake. I've said that many times. Mm. Do not forget that the federal government budgets for education. All the states also budget for education. So when you want to look at our education spend really as a country, the ideal thing to do is to look at what the states are doing and the federal government are doing to see the quantum amount that has been invested in education. But that said, one of the key things we know that for us to crack our education challenges, we must get the private sector involved. We, the government alone can never, will never be able to have enough resources to do that. And let mm. me give you a good example. Look at the education space. Look at the number of private schools we have in the system. Mm. Imagine if we had no private schools. Do you think it's possible for the government alone to provide for all the students that want to go to school? But there are concerns from primary school or private schools, um, participation, and also investors yeah. as well. Yeah. What do you think are their concerns? When you say, when say concerns, what do you mean, sorry? There's the several concerns of, okay, the political to actually get some policies. Yeah, I mean, listen, this is the best. My mm -hmm. sis, I mean, I mean, one of the key things we, we, we all have to come to, you know, and. I think it's one of the challenges we have. I mean, I, I notice that a lot when we're in Lagos State, where people feel it's us against them, the private school owners. And we say, no, no, we're, we're one. It's an education system where if, if the private schools are providing the service that we as government can never, we'll never be able to provide all by ourselves. Mm. Uh, but let me, let me build on that. I mean, mm. imagine all the private schools mm. say we're not playing that space again. All the children in their schools, where will they go? They go to. So... It's a partnership we have to make, we have, we have, which we have all have to commit to work together. When I say solving the education challenge, mm. it's critical that we put the private sector up and central. So whatever framework we're coming in, the private sector must be key players in helping us solve it. So let me, and, 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 and it's simple. Mm. History in this country has shown mm. us that we solve big problems when government and private sector come together. So I, I like telling people, I mean, you and I were young enough to remember the NITEL days when NITEL was the only provider of <laughs> telephone in this country. You and I were around to know that. But look at what we have today. today. And what we have is a partnership between government and private sector, and we've cracked that problem. And I also tell people, bef um, um, I, I, don't have, I can't remember the numbers particularly, but I know, for example, that the first private university, the first government university in this country mm -hmm. was University of Libano, mm -hmm. I think in 1948, if I'm not wrong, you know. And the first private university was registered in 1999. Mm. But if you look at the number of universities we have now, we probably have more private universities than government universities. Sure. So it tells you that the private sector will always be a key player in solving our, our education problems. So when Mr. President makes a commitment, yes, as government, we are going to commit to put more funds in it. But also, it's also to ensure that the private sector get fully involved in mm. helping us solve mm. our education challenges. All right. Quick, uh, quickly, of course, um, your love for entrepreneurship is giving you so much uh, drive in the different areas. And now, we're looking at smart governments, we're looking at smart cities, so we should be looking at smart education yeah, means yeah, as well, yeah. through enabled technology. Yeah, yeah. Now, research has shown that education enables social economic mobility. Very well. Let's get you to drive that 
for someone who is watching this program, for institutions who want to say, okay, how do we redirect our energies for the young populace? Most of the time now we find them in the different vices and which we don't want. If we're going to be building the great institutions of the world like the Asians have done, then program like we said, the TVET and some other areas yeah. of contempt for you. Yeah. How do we push that for no, social I mean, mobility? I mean, I mean, it's key. Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me, I mean, to build on what you just said, one of the key things we, we, we must do, and we're working on the framework right now, we're trying to come up with a framework of how do we mainstream technology into our education system. Great. Now, there's a lot of te te um, technology-based tools right now helping education, but we've not come up with a deliberate way of bringing them into our education system as we know it today. So one of the questions we have to ask ourselves is that, yes, we have a lot of technological advancement in education right now. Mm. Which ones can we, do we need, do we want to put? How much will it cost us? How do we do it in such a way that it doesn't, it doesn't um, mess up the framework we have, but improves on it? Mm. You know, those are the kind so of things. who should be answering those questions? No, we're answering those questions. So right now, we're coming up with a framework. It's a framework that's going to be nationwide. Okay. So something that, once the framework is done, it's easy for any state to pick it up and say, okay, if I want to mainstream this, this tech, we, we, we recommend that you mainstream, tech, you, you bring this technology into your school in the area of teacher improvements and student improvement in these areas. And this is how you're going to do it. So that's, we're working on that right now. I'm hoping the next one or two months that will be ready. A clear framework for us to do that. That helps you to bring technology into your schools and improve the education outcome. Mm. What technology also allows us to do is access. Mm. It improves access. Mm. Because the question is, how many schools do we need to build now to bring more children in? It's cost. So mm. we need to leverage technology okay. to do that. And that's what we're doing. And that's a commitment. Mm. So when Mr. President makes that commitment, it's also because we are doing a lot of work to ensure that that, that is done. OK. Um, one of such um, areas of improvement for technology why well, I keep going back to Lagos because you mentioned that yeah. as well. And um, reading up some of the activities and following up, yeah. you could actually monitor what is happening yeah. in such school without necessarily having a third yeah. party yeah. Uh, getting involved. This is what technology is going to be doing. So earlier, I asked about bridging the gap between the rural areas yeah. and also that of the urban areas, which is key for us today. We know issue of power. We know about issue of even getting the network um, areas covered effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Is the office looking into this direction to actually bring up... Where, where is the technology? Um, uh, um, education on radio is technology. Certainly. So, well, like I said earlier, one of the key things most states are doing now, and we're mm. very excited about that, is putting education content back on radio. You recall when we were growing up, that was mm. key. After some time, and it eased out, but COVID has forced us to bring that in now. So you, you are able to learn, if you're committed, if you're serious to learn by listening to radio programs and improving yourselves, you know. That's, those are the kind of things that we also do. But you see, one of the key things I, I, I like to also emphasize at times like this is the part you as an individual have to play in your own story. So what should that part be? No, a commitment to want your life to be better too. Government will not, cannot and must not do everything for you. It can happen. Government cannot do it. There's also a commitment of the parents, a commitment of the child himself, the commitment of the communities. So we're Africans. We should never forget that. We should never let the Western culture break down the key fabric of an African, of our African culture. It tells you that it's a village that brings up a child, mm -hmm. that everybody gets involved in bringing. When I was growing up, I remember clearly, mm -hmm. you know, if you get a result that was not good, you know that your daddy will hear, your mother will hear, your uncle will hear, your auntie will hear, your grandma will hear. The whole so street that, the whole will hear. So that alone makes you know that you don't want to be embarrassed. So we mustn't lose that critical aspect of our being African. One of my worries is that we're getting to Western for us for ourselves. We, we're adopting everything from the Western culture as if it's correct, but don't get me wrong. The West is right in some things. But even if you look at the Western system itself, they have their own challenges. So even as we download in quotes, download the things that suits us, you know, and suits our cultural perspective as a nation. So one of the key things I, we must never lose is parents, um, people getting involved in ensuring that even this, that our children take education serious and improve themselves as, as they need to. Yeah. Um, coming now to work at this level, that is uh, at the federal, yeah. different from what you've seen and experienced at the state, I'm sure you have something different to describe. For I mean, I, I, I tell people I consider myself very privileged. Um, my private sector background, um, working in Lagos State, you know, and working here at the federal, working and living in Abuja. I, I want, the living is very also very important. Less traffic than I had when I was in Lagos. <laughs> but the reality is that I've come to understand Nigeria far more. And if I've taken anything away from my time here in Abuja is that 
our education challenges will be solved by the states. We must, you see, the states, our state governments, you know, state administrators must get involved and critically work to solve our education problems. So the answers are with us right here in Nigeria. It's here. Certainly not Nigeria. outside. No, it's here. We can do it. We have the people, we have the policy, we have the resources we have come to do it. Yes, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Education Interventions. Thank you for having Mr. me. Mr. Fela Bankolimo. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having program. me. And that's it on the sports uh, for this say, uh, particular week. And uh, we thank you for your time and for watching. Next time it will be with another interesting guest. My name is Blessing Abu. Goodbye. Thank you.